I would like to take the time to review the Conrad Elgin Pelican model in 150th scale. This particular model, which is referred to by Conrad as model number 5066, is actually a replica of the Elgin Pelican Premier, which was released in the mid to late 1980s when Elgin revamped their entire sweeper line and gave them all a uniform design, indicated by the beige, red, and brown lines going across the sweeper, which was the new design for all Elgin sweepers at the time. Now, I actually own several of these Conrad Elgin Pelican Premier models, and through the years of collecting them, I've become somewhat of an expert on these pieces. There were at least two versions of this model. I'm not positive which succeeded and preceded the other, but the other versions of this scale model have a cream-colored center with a wheel spoke that's actually part of the hubcap, and not a rivet as seen here. Among the other differences, other versions will have a more squared-off strobe, as opposed to the one you see here that's rounded. Some will also have some minor differences in decal quality and layout. I've seen plenty that have smaller and larger decals. As far as how they do in the market, they're actually pretty desirable pieces among collectors. They typically go for upwards of anywhere from $50 to $100, and sometimes even more. That's mainly because aside from Conrad being among the gold standard of scale models at the time, these really weren't meant to be in the hands of collectors like me or you. They were specifically made for Elgin as a marketing agreement between them and the then West Germany-based Conrad. Yes, this was that long ago. As a matter of fact, if you flip the model over and look on the bottom of the hopper, there's a die-stamped label that says Conrad, made in West Germany. This was made before the fall of the Berlin Wall, which actually gives it a little bit of historical significance. So, you may ask, how are people getting a hold of them? I see them getting sold. They actually started popping up in auctions, estate sales, flea markets, and so on, because Elgin themselves actually gave these particular models out as promotional pieces to customers, dealerships, and so on. A lot of these Pelican models were put in cabinets and attics pretty quick, if not right away, and pretty much forgotten about until one day the person that has it digs it out looking around for things to sell to make extra cash and slaps it up on eBay. That explains why most of them you see getting sold more often than not have beautifully preserved decals because they most likely haven't seen the light of day since 1987. Conrad ceased production of them in the late 1980s, and around 1995, Road Champs started manufacturing a cheaper, more store-available one in the same design scheme. Now let's move on to the model itself. As you see, it has an actual textile main broom in the center. I've always thought that that's what really makes a Conrad model a Conrad. They actually go the extra mile to emulate certain textures to the best of their ability. The model does move, and the singular wheel made up of two small wheels in the back actually turn the machine as its real-life counterpart. The two gutter brushes that are meant to sweep the debris into the center path of the machine are plastic casts. They do turn as well. The hopper actually lifts with extraordinary detail to the hydraulic lifts. It also has a detailed conveyor belt system. You will also notice there are two steering wheels in the cab. The Pelican, as well as other Elgin sweepers, are dual transmission, which means you can steer from either side of the machine depending on what side of the street you're sweeping. That about does it for this model and everything I know about it. If you like what you saw, give this video a like and go ahead and subscribe. Thank you.